Welcome back. We're still talking about maximum likelihoods, and we just derived the very simple uh, likelihood for fitting the mean of a normal distribution when uh, we had one data point y. So now we're going to expand that to a more realistic situation and ask, what if we have multiple observations? So instead of just one y, I've got a whole vector of y's, and I'm going to index every individual uh, data point in that vector y as uh, y subscript i. So y subscript i is just the ith data point in a whole vector of data. So if we want to ask the question of the likelihood of all of these data points, and then say there's n of them, uh, we get that if we assume that each observation is, each error is independent, uh, we get that by taking the product of each of the individual likelihoods. So one way to, to kind of remember that what we do with uh, probabilities is we multiply them together. You know, you can think about if we are flipping a coin, if we flip one coin and we have a 50-50 chance of getting heads, a probability of 0.5. If we ask what's the probability of getting two heads, it's one quarter because there's, you know, uh, one in four ways to get that. But we got that by multiplying uh, the 0.5 for one coin by the 0.5 for the other, and, and we got uh, 0.25. So just remember that intuition is that when we're combining multiple observations together, we're going to multiply their likelihoods if they're independent. Uh, if, we're, if they're not independent, then you end up with a more complicated way of approaching this that has to account for multivariate normal distributions and correlations, and we won't deal with that right now. Uh, it's a later topic uh, for uh, the graduate level continuation of what we we're learning here. Um, so we end up ultimately with a product of each of these normal distributions. So this equation is exactly the same of what we looked at before, except for the subscript i, and that we're now multiplying things together. Uh, now we can start to see actually why uh, logarithms actually help us a little bit. So if we take the log of this likelihood, uh, this product now turns into a sum. <clears throat> and that is great because sums are much easier to work with than products, particularly if you need to take derivatives. So if I take derivatives of product, I have to do the chain rule you know, the product rule over every uh, individual component on the list. And if, you know, that, that's going to become incredibly complicated incredibly quickly. By contrast, once I take the logs and make this a sum, I can take ultimately take the derivative of every item in the sum independently because they're just being added together. OK, so then what looks what's inside the sum looks exactly like what we had before. We had that minus 1 half log of the stuff in the denominator. Uh, plus, ah, shoot, there shouldn't have been a two there. Uh, ignore that two in the denominator. It should just be minus, uh, y i minus mu squared. Oh, no, apologies. That should be there. I just haven't taken the log yet. I, sorry, I haven't taken the derivative yet. So yeah, the exponent just gets rid of uh, the log and exponent just cancel out. And now, uh, and reorganize this a little bit. So if I have a sum over this term n times, well, that is just the same thing n times in a row. So I end up with n of these terms. And I've just simplified this a little bit uh, by pulling the sigma and the 2 pi out. But basically, when I have a sum over a constant, I just have n times that constant. And now I have a sum over this term. I can factor the 2 sigma squared in the denominator out. Uh, and I just get left with uh, the sum of yi minus mu squared. Cool. <clears throat> so next, I'm going to take the derivative of the likelihood with respect to mu. So the derivative of this term with respect to mu is 0 because there's no mu in it. The derivative of this term is zero because there's no mu in it. And again, if we take the derivative, it's the same as before. This two uh, comes down and cancels with that two. The minus one inside the parentheses uh, comes out, cancels with that minus one. And we just now get this uh, one over sigma squared sum of yi minus mu set that equal to zero. As before, 
we can multiply each side by sigma squared and just get a sum of yi minus mu equals zero. And now I'm gonna rely on another trick, which is I'm gonna uh, expand this out and I'm gonna end up with uh, a sum of yi's uh, minus a sum of mu's. And again, a sum of mu's of n mu's is just the definition of n times mu. Um, and so that's gonna simplify down to the sum of y, the sum of the y's equals n times mu. And then I'll just uh, divide by n and I will get the, uh, the maximum likely estimate of mu is just the mean of the y's because the sum of y divided by n is just my definition of a sample mean. So again, we end up with a, a very intuitive result. Um, the point here wasn't actually to end up with a result that wasn't intuitive, uh, one that you couldn't have figured out on your own with a little bit of thought, but to kind of give a, a taste for what the, the mathematics of putting this together actually looks like. Um, cool. So having a, a first exposure to what the math looks like, we're gonna actually uh, next look at how we handle estimating the error as well, and then move on to some more complicated models.